Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Flick here, Chris Flick Podcast number 81. Today, man, we're hitting the whiteboard, so if you're listening to this online, you're going to have to find this thing on YouTube if you want to get the, uh, the finer details of all this. Basically, we're, we're answering a question here. It's a Q&A situation where a kid I used to coach was like, hey, coach, I'm in college. I need a program, right? So I'm thinking to myself, what kind of equipment do you have? What kind of time commitment and all this other stuff? And what it came down to was this. I took a bunch of different ideas. We got a little bit of some Dan John here. We got a little bit of Chad Wesley Smith. We got a little bit of Marty Gallinger. And what we're going to try to do here is, is uh, try to remain, try to keep our fitness level to the highest level that we can while living that college lifestyle and also building a little bit of lean muscle mass. Because that the muscle that you build right now in your 20s, uh, that's the muscle that's going to be there when you're 60, 70, 80, right? The stronger we could get right now, the better, we're, the stronger we're going to be when we're 50. The stronger we're going to be when we're 60, 70. You get the idea, okay? So the goal is going to be to, to, you know, get as strong as we can, but not compromising our body composition. We need to get that lean muscle mass up, be right with our diet, be right with our sleeping, be right with getting outside, getting some natural sunlight, and then moving forward from there, right? I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have the physical activity level up, all right, if you don't have the sleep thing figured out, and if you don't get outside, I would put, I would put all my focus into that, all right? Once you get that stuff situated, where you increase your daily activity, you sleep better, and uh, you get outside and get some natural sunlight, if you're not able to do that, then that's where your focus needs to be. It's not about the minutia of what we're gonna talk about here. All right, if you got those three things in check, now we're gonna start hammering the weights, okay? Like I mentioned here, a little Dan John situation here. Push, pull, squat, hinge, right? And the bottom right, doing a total body thing. I'll say it everywhere, man. Now, this was all in Costco, if you always had a total body thing in his programs. What, we, what we're trying to build here is a well-rounded approach here um, that involves a little bit of uh, dumbbell work, unilateral stuff, a little bit of barbell work, and we're trying to build a total body here with, with uh, supersets, right, basically. Now, we're breaking this thing down. Each week, we're gonna change our rep scheme, and then each week, we're gonna change the amount of sets that we do. Week one, we're doing 10 reps for three sets. That's 30 total reps. All of our reps are gonna be kind of in that sweet spot of you know 18 to 30 all right some of them are going to exceed like in week two we do eight reps of uh sorry eight reps for four sets that puts us at 32 all right week three five reps five sets week four three reps six sets all right so you're doing tens one week eights the next week fives the next week threes the next week each week you add another set we're doing three sets week one four sets week two five sets week three, six sets week four, all right? As we progress here, say you do 50 pounds week one, maybe you could do 55 here, maybe you could do 60 here, maybe on this last week, week four, you do 65s or 70s, okay? That's how we have to do it. As the sets go up, sets are gonna go up, reps are gonna come down, that means weight's gotta go up too. If you use the same weight across the board here, you're not gonna be able to reach uh, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna optimize your time in the gym, okay? So now when we start looking at putting the workout itself together, okay? We have a dumbbell push press. That's a total body move. You're gonna dip, boom, drive the weights up, right? And then we have a suitcase carry here. Now I don't have carry in here, but as you can see, carries are gonna show up on each thing. The carry's great because it builds work capacity. You know, suitcase carries, you got a weight on one side, you walk, you know, 50 to 100 yards, switch hands, come back. You're performing exercise for you know 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on how far you walk. All right, it builds your capacity to do work, which over time is going to be great. You know, you look at this old school type of training, like the manual labor type people, where they can just repeat tasks over and over and over again. That's a work capacity thing. It's what they do. They carry stuff for long distances. They come back. They set it down. They take a break. They pick something else up. Carry it for long distance. We're trying to build that ability to do stuff like that so that as we progress our way through life, you know, we're not going to crumble after we do one load of, you know, unloading stuff from our truck to our house, okay? So we're going to have to be able to carry stuff in a safe manner. When we're doing the carries, good posture. Your nose, your chest, and your, 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 where your, you know, your zipper would be on your pants should be in a straight line. You don't want to be twisting to one side. If you have the weight in your right hand, you don't want to be leaning to your left to counterbalance yourself. You should remain good posture throughout. You know, like that old school, um, you know, nun Catholic school thing that, you know, they used to put books on somebody's head. That's what, uh, that's what you need to keep in mind as you do this, okay? So we got the push press. We have a suitcase carry. Now we're going to get into our next superset. It's going to be a chin-up and a goblet squat. Now I chose the goblet squat as like the level one introductory thing. 
If you know how to squat, I would personally recommend the front squat, okay? Where you load the bar in the front and you're doing deep squats. You combine that with the chin up and you're getting some great work. Now, as we look at these reps here, 10 chin ups is a lot, okay? If you can't get that, then just get what you can. Maybe do a set of two, maybe do a set of three, maybe do a set of five, okay? That equals 10. That's one round. The goal is gonna to be to get to that 30, 30 rep number, okay? So two, three, five, two, three, five, two, three, five, we'll get you there. Goblet squat now. We wanna crank this up, three sets of 10, okay? Three, three hard sets of 10. It's not like, you know, you're doing 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, and that 40 pounder you could do for 20 reps, but you only did 10 because that's what the program called for. It's maybe doing a 60 pounder for 10. You know, if you could front squat 200 pounds for, for two, you know, we wanna see you hit about 155 for a 10 piece. All right, that is what's gonna get you some results, okay? Now when we move on, we do three sets of that, right? 10 reps, then we move on to our next superset here, bench press. Three heavy sets of bench for 10 reps, okay? That means maybe you have to do one warm-up set to get, that, get the blood pumping. Maybe you do the bar for a set. Maybe you do one warm-up, and then maybe you get your three sets of 10. All right, you gotta ramp it up. You gotta start, start light, get some blood pumping to the area that you're about to exercise, and then crank the weights up there and try to get strong. Single leg RDL. I think on both days here, you know, we try to do some unilateral stuff. You know, we have the single leg RDL, we have a split squat, we have a dumbbell push press, we have a weight in each hand, but these, these, these arms could go in um, whatever direction they want to go in, okay? We want to mix in some unilateral stuff or some unstable stuff, which is why we're using the dumbbells for some of these things. We have the single leg RDL, the single leg deadlift, great exercise. Make sure those hamstrings and glutes are doing the work. Make sure you're keeping great balance as you do it, and uh, just keep moving that way, okay? Bench press, single leg RDL. At the end of this thing here, you see this here, everybody. This says sprints. This is some high intensity stuff. This kid's in college, he played high school football. He's got the ability to go outside and run right now. Not all of us do um, at a certain level, but all of us can move at a fast pace, right? So what we're doing here with these sprints, I should have slash hills, okay? Because the hill makes things a little bit safer. If we're running, say you're gonna run 100 yards. I was just talking to a guy this week who, who just got out of college. High school track guy, he's working on his starts. You know, he's concerned about hamstring injuries that he had in the past. He's starting in a dead stop. He's sprinting out of there. And I'm like, hey man, uh, you don't want to do that. He told me about when he felt his hamstrings in, in high school it was from right out of the start. And I'm like, yeah, that's when it happens. When you're at that dead stop and you accelerate out of there, that's when that muscle gets pulled, right? So don't do that, okay? If you're a grown up now, you're in college, you're 25, 35, 45, 55. You need to take care of your muscles, right? So if you got 100 yards marked off here, maybe you jog for 20 yards, maybe you crank it up a little bit for 20 yards, and then you burst for the last 60. Don't do what is described as a jackrabbit start where you're just totally still, and then you jump out of your stance, okay? Don't do that. That's when you're going to feel some muscle pulls. So you kind of ease in, and you do these build-up sprints, okay? You do eight of these, right? Why do you do eight? Who knows? But eight's a good fair number where those first one or two are kind of warm-ups, Three, four, five, six, feeling pretty good. Seven and eight are getting you out of breath. Then you go home, you rinse, you repeat. Hopefully it doesn't leave you too sore. Hopefully it's a repeatable workout that you can just do over and over again. And you can gauge your fitness level by doing this. We're not trying to crush you with these eight. We want these eight sprints to be something that you could do over and over again, not waking up with devastating leg soreness, okay? So that's day one. Um, if you do this program, you could do an A, B, A, B, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing, or you, know, you just do this thing twice a week as a minimum, that'd be pretty darn good, okay? Moving on. Day two, dumbbell squat jump, right? Dumbbells at your side, you take the dumbbells to knee level and you jump as high as you can. It's not just these little hops at the ankle joint, it's trying to get vertical, trying to jump as high as you can. Then we got the ab wheel, all right? I'm not a big proponent of doing 10 reps on uh, explosive exercises. I'm not even a big fan of doing eight reps for explosive exercise, but this program's gonna do it, okay? It, it's, it's a conditioning thing, it's not, it's a little bit safer than doing some of these other plyometric things that have a lot of moving components. All you're doing is jumping with some light, light, light dumbbells in your hands. I'm talking 10 pounders, that's it. Um, the reason we're doing 10 pounds in each hand is because we want to still get maximum height. You don't use 40s where your like, posture gets all jacked up and you jump an inch off the ground. Use some 10 pounders, add a little bit of resistance, and get vertical, right? Get as high as you can. Then you got your ab wheels. Next superset, this is a big one. Overhand grip, pull-ups, right? We talked about it, man. When we get to these tens, you might have to do two, three, fives. You might not even be able to get two, right? 
But either way, you gotta practice. Then maybe you do some one twos, one two, one two, or just a bunch of 10 sets of one, whatever it may be. But we wanna get those numbers up, right? Also, when you get down to these days, when you get to these threes, whether you're doing the chin-ups or the pull-up, you're gonna have to add weight here because if you're physically capable of doing eight pull-ups and you get to these days where you're supposed to do fives and threes, like you're not gonna get much out of that. Add a little bit of weight or hang in between each rep, all right? Hang for 10 seconds and then do a pull-up. Hang for 10 seconds, do a pull-up. Or hang for 30 seconds, do a pull-up, right? If you can do that for three, you're in, you're in rare company, okay? Keep in mind, there's not a lot of fit people out there, but you would be fit amongst the fit if you could do that for three reps. Hang for 30 seconds, pull yourself up. Hang for 30 seconds, pull yourself up. Hang for 30 seconds, pull yourself up. If you could do that, kudos to you. Moving on, barbell RDL. This is our hip hinge, all right? We're hinging at the hips, we're loading up the hamstrings, then we're standing up. We got a slight knee bend. All we're, we're moving to the point where that barbell goes maybe knee level right below the knee, okay? Wherever you feel that little stretch in the hammies, that's where you stop and you come on up here. We don't have to spike it off the ground. We don't have to lose. We have to keep our, our spine in, in, in mind here. As we start lowering that weight, we don't want to start rounding it forward. We want to be able to maintain good posture while we perform the hinge and then come up, all right? And then the next exercise here, my favorite exercise, the absolute best exercise to test upper body strength, total body strength to be, on, well, not the best, right? We got things like the deadlift, right? But for an upper body exercise that involves the total body, the military press is king. How many guys at the gym, you know, could, could bench press 225, right? You've seen that, they're like a dime a dozen. How many guys could military press their body weight, right? How many guys, if they're a 175 pound guy and they could bench 225, you think you could put 175 on that bar and press it overhead? You think they could do 195, 200 pounds, right? You just don't see it anymore. Back in the day, you know, the clean plus strict press, that used to be an Olympic event. Bench press gets invented. The shift focuses off of standing and pressing weight. It's like one of the oldest things ever, man. It's like those old circus strongman things. Guys bat one arm pressing 320 pounds over their head. You know, it's a lost start. I need to bring it back. You need to bring it back. We all need to bring it back. So the military press, right? 10, 8, 5, 3. Try to get strong. We don't use our legs for the military press. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt. <sighs> Forcefully exhale as you drive that weight overhead. If you feel it in your back, that means that your core, your trunk area is not quite ready to support that weight in an overhead position. Your upper body might be able to handle it, but your, your midsection, your trunk's not able to. Lighten the load. You know, when you set to 10, we're building up, uh, you know, we're building up, you know, we talked about work capacity earlier. We're building up that capacity to do heavier work down the road. If you, if you only have to use the barbell, because when you put fives on there, it hurts your back, then just use the barbell. Be patient. We're in this thing for the long haul, right? We're trying to be champions, you know. We're trying to live, be as fit as possible when we're in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. One great way to not be able to do that is to get injured while training. So be smart, right? Take care of your bodies. Um, I mean, this is it. We got an A workout and a B workout. Oh, sorry, farmer's walk at the end. Pick up two dumbbells, man. If you can get half body weight in each hand, so if you're a 180 pound dude, you got 90, a 90 pounder, 90 pounder, and you can walk 100 yards, you're doing a good thing, okay? If you're not there, then work up to it, all right? If you're at a third of your body weight, that's fine. Each week, try to get it, go a little bit further or try to go a little bit heavier, all right? This is it, man. Push, pull, squat, hinge, total body. All right, we got our carries mixed in here. We got a unilateral work with the suitcase carry with the single leg RDL and the split squats. Um, I was trying to find a place for this one arm overhead press and I just couldn't. That'll be part two of the program, right? That's all I got for you today, man. Crystal Podcast episode 81. Um, we're on Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, and all the like, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this thing here. Um, enjoy it, man. Peace, everybody.